So this bear walks into a bar and he looks over at the bartender and he says, Hey buddy, give me a whiskey and cola. Bartender kind of looks at him and he says, Okay, but why the big paws? And the bear says, Oh, I don't know. I was just born with them. <laughs> Hey, how are you? This is John. Thank you so much for joining me for another scale modeling how-to video. Today we're going to be weathering this guy. Bandai's 172 scale Destroyed Spartan from Macross or Robotech. Whichever you prefer. <laughs> Quite often when I'm weathering a model like this, I want to get some streaking and some staining in to look like where water has run down, dirt, grime, things like that. And in the past, I've used oils and what's called the dot filter method. You've probably seen it where you put little dots of oil and then you take some thinners and a brush and you just begin streaking it down. It's used a lot on armor uh, and it, it, it leaves a really cool finish. But the problem that I have is I need things to happen quickly so that I can get them up on the blog, so that I can get moving along. And so I need speed. I need things to happen. <laughs> uh, I, I don't need to wait several days for oils to dry so that I can go in and put uh, additional products over the top of it to finish the weathering. So I need something like acrylics, but acrylics dry so fast you can't really effectively put down dots of acrylics and streak them. But there is a technique that will get virtually the same appearance that you can get from an, uh, a dot filter uh, application using acrylics. So that's what I wanted to uh, demonstrate today on this model. Okay, I'm going to be using a variety of Vallejo model wash uh, products. I've got a variety of colors here. You can use other colors. I, I thought for the, the model that I'm working on, these would look good. I've got desert dust, European dust, brown, blue gray, dark green, and gray. You could add additional colors if they're not in the model wash line certainly. Um, other washes that are water-based would work. You could even use very thin acrylic paint. Um, it doesn't have to be these. I just choose these for convenience sake and they work really well. I like them. In addition to the model washes, I've got some brushes ready to go. I've got a, a liner brush that's going to be my primary brush for application. This is a zero size liner brush. I've got a second one ready to go. Uh, this is a number one liner brush but frankly it's about the same size as the other one. It's just a different brand. I have this larger brush. It's a uh, number three and this is basically just going to be used to get product from the container onto the pallet and maybe stir in some water. So this is just utility brush. So having a, a, another brush purely for utility purposes standing by is, is a, a good thing to have. I've got a very simple pallet. You've, if you've watched my videos, you've seen him before. It's Mr. Oatmeal Lid. Um, I, because these are going to be really thin, I, I don't bother with a wet pallet. Uh, I'm going to be adding a lot of water as you're going to see. So 
they'll 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 work fine with this. And, and because I work in sections and use a little bit of product at a time, it all works out in the end. I've got a little container of water standing by to thin everything with. And I've got some paper towel. You'll need that to offload the brushes to clean things up and just to keep yourself from making a mess. Okay, at this stage, the model has a gloss coat, then the decals were put down over that, then some additional gloss coat was added to seal in the decals. It's been given a panel line wash, and I've gone in and done all of the chipping that I want. Uh, use the sponge technique for the chipping, but that's you can do any kind of chipping you want. The, the streaking is going to go over all of this because in the, in the real world, if this were a real object, all of the, when it rained and when dirt got on it and when all of that happened, it would happen over the top of all of those things. So that's why I do it at this stage. Now, that you can do this over a gloss surface, a satin surface, or a matte surface. Each of them will produce a slightly different result. When the streaking is done over the gloss surface, the streaking washes will beat up occasionally, just a little bit. And for this model, that's what I want. If you do it over a satin or a matte surface, they tend to not beat up, but especially over a matte surface, they'll often spread out. Uh, you know, a gloss surface is much smoother, so that's why they beat up. There's, there's not all the surface tension. On a matte surface, there's uh, tiny surface imperfections that, that scatter the light. That's why we don't see it as gloss. And when the wash is put over that, it will bleed a little bit into it. If that's the effect you're wanting, then it's perfect to, to do it over a matte surface. What I would recommend is that you, you maybe take just a piece of sheet plastic and have a glossy surface on it, uh, a satin surface and a matte surface, and just practice a little bit if you're using these washes for the first time just to see the difference it, make, it makes. Because each of them produces a different result, and each of them can add to the character and depth of the finish. One is not better than the other. They're simply different outcomes based on what the surface is you're applying it over. So that's, that's always something to factor in. But for this one, I'm going in on top of a gloss surface, mainly because that's what I've got, and I like the way the streaking looks when I do that. The other factor to consider is the streaks, the, the washes can be applied directly onto the surface or you can wet the surface. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it dry, I guess you'd say. I'll put them down on the dry surface, which tends to confine the streaks to the area you place them. If you put it in over a wet surface, they will, they'll spread out a little more. If it's glossy, there will still be some beading, um, which you may want. You may want that spread. Again, the conditions that are on the model when you put the product on will determine how the product dries. So I, I can't tell you that any one is better than the other. You simply got to, to do it a little bit and decide which one you like. They're all essentially tools in your toolkit. If you're trying to recreate a look, recreate a condition, you'll know that you know, perhaps one time in a certain area for a certain look you want to use a, 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 a wet surface that's matte and apply it over that to get a particular look. And then you may want to come back later and seal it with a gloss and add some more over it to get a different look. That layering of the weathering will really give depth to the finish of your model. You can certainly go overboard on it. It, 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 takes, it takes experimentation and practical application to see what works when so that you are in control of the weathering process rather than the weathering process being in control of you. 
that's something that I've noticed over the years in, in my own experience and in talking and observing others is that quite often when you start using a weathering technique, the weathering technique is in control of you and it takes a little bit of practical application, experience, and just seeing what works in what conditions before you can fully feel like you're in control of the process. Um, I'm still new to using acrylics for weathering, but I'm finally starting to feel comfortable with being able to control the process rather than the process controlling me. So we'll see how that works on this model. Okay, to get started, I'm going to work with the Vallejo Model Wash Desert Dust first. I like to start with the lighter colors and then build the darker colors up on top of them. Sometimes towards the end, I may go back in with some of the lighter colors just for touch-ups, but that's the method I like to work with. I've got my palette here. I've already, you have to shake these up really well. I actually put a little agitator ball in there to help with that. Um, you want to make sure these are thoroughly mixed before you start using them. Now, what I'll do is put a few drops on my palette like that and then I'll get my larger brush and my water and I'm just gonna get me a pool of water here to thin this down And I don't mind if some of the product gets in my mixing water here because it just adds to the variety and character of the streaks. Sometimes when I'm doing this process, I'll have three or four colors on here and I'll dab in one and dab in another and streak it on and let them mix. It just, it just adds to the product. Now let me clean the brush here off camera. Okay, the trick to using acrylic washes because you can't put dots and streak them, you have to do the streaks from the beginning. The oils and enamels are what I would describe as a subtractive process. You put stuff on the model and then using a brush and thinners, you take stuff away. Acrylics are an additive process. You put them on the model in light layers and build them up to get the desired effect. Another thing to keep in mind is that acrylics will go on with much more intense color than they usually dry with. So again, with some experience, you'll start seeing how intense you can put it on and, and know how it's going to look when it's done. That's part of getting in control of the process. All right. What I'll do is I'll just get some of the wash on my brush and I'll offload a little bit of it onto a paper towel off camera there. And I'm just simply going to go in and just draw in some streaks. They don't have to be particularly neat. I really doubt if these are even showing up on camera. I'm drawing them from, uh, in terms of the direction of the, of the the, the model from top to bottom, it will deposit more of the wash at the bottom of the stroke, which is what I want. If you wanted more of the wash in the other direction, you would go back the other way. But I'm just adding these in, and it doesn't have to be completely from top to bottom. You can start at the top and pull down halfway. You can start halfway and pull to the bottom. You can just add some along the bottom. This is this is going to dry so light that it, it won't really be visible on camera. But over, over time and layers, it will really start to build up. And because they dry so fast, as I'm, as I'm talking, I can see the, the, the wetness of the streaks that I just put on. And as I'm talking, I can watch them dry up. 
So they dry really fast. So typically what I do is I go through and I work a section of the model at a time and I just add in these streaks. Now I'm doing it slow to show what I'm doing, but normally when I'm especially when I'm putting in these initial layers, I'm doing it more like this. I'm not I'm not being too particular because they're going to be so light that I won't see at this point any particular streak. It it just begins to tint the surface just a little bit. Now, if you're doing this and you feel like it's not imparting enough color on it, you can add a little more of the wash to your mix so that it's not so thin. Uh, again, it, it comes with doing it and seeing how much you can get away with, how much is right, how much is working for the, for the look you're trying to achieve. Because if you want it to be a heavily weathered model, you may not want to thin this out as much. If you're wanting it to be a little more subtle, more thinning will be warranted. So again, it's all about being in control of the process. If I had to, to say which is the best approach to take when you're starting off doing this, start light and then go heavy as you learn to use it because it's always easy to add stuff, it's much harder to take away. Now, I, I really doubt that much of this will show up on camera, unfortunately, at this stage, but I'm starting to see the streaks and they're looking exactly like I want. It's, it's very similar to what you would get with the dot filter method. I like acrylics because they have while, while it does replicate the other methods, they have a character of their own, and I really like them. I, I, I like the control that if I want a streak right there, and I want it that length, I can do it. With oils, I always felt like while I was in control of the process, sometimes while the haphazardness made for randomness, sometimes it was, I found it difficult to get, okay, this is exactly what I want and I had to work with it a lot more. This additive process allows me to do that. I feel like I'm in control better with these than with oils or enamels. Okay, I've had, uh, spent a little time off camera adding the rest of the streaks using the desert dust color. Now I'm going to switch to European dust. It's a bit darker than the, the desert dust, but it's kind of in the middle of where the brown is and the other colors that I'm using. So I've given it a good shake, and I'm going to put a few more drops here on my palette. And I'll add a little bit of water in. just like I did before. I'm essentially repeating the process that I did in the previous segment. But what's going on is I'm building these colors up. Now, when I'm adding these streaks, this is where you have to make some decisions, some big decisions, like Bob Ross says. I like for the lighter colors, or in this case, it's lighter colors. I like for the higher contrast colors to go down first and to be heavier because they're more easily seen. They provide uh, some difference in tone or uh, in, in color to the surface. As you get to these darker ones, you have to make some decisions about how prominent do you want to feature them. You may do as many streaks as you did with the lighter color. You may not. Um, I'm going to do fewer streaks with this darker color because I don't, I don't want to essentially do too heavy of a filter that's going to take this 
kind of pleasant green color that it started off as and turned the whole thing brown. Maybe further down on the feet, I want some of that dirt, that brown look. But here, I'm going to be a little more selective about the streaks that I put in and the placement of them than I was with the lighter color. Now, I'm not being too careful. I'm not, I'm not avoiding going over previous streaks. I'm, I'm still being fairly haphazard, but a little more deliberate. Now, every now and then, just for fun, on any, any model, I like to add some some exaggerated areas like you'll notice here on his forearm and the foot I've got some really just over the top chipping I've got one more up here on his uh, on his rocket launchers so you may find an area that you decide you know what for whatever reason this spot right here is gonna be really dirty and so all along the way as you're adding your different colors, you can just go in and stipple in some color right there and make that a bit of a, a bit of a feature for the weathering. You may have a, a reason in your mind that you want to do that. You may not. It's entirely up to you. But I'm, I just, just made a decision that, okay, this is an area that I'm going to give a little more grime and dirt and dust to because, just because. It, it gives the viewer, I hear, um, if, if you have not ever watched any videos from Lincoln Wright of Paint on Plastic, you need to do that. After you watch this one, of course. <laughs> um, but he's, he's got great, his videos do a great job of showing you not only how to do techniques like this, but for really understanding why it's being done and how it's there's always a subtle undertone in his work of a story driven approach and I, I love that about his work now as I was rambling on there um, about Link um, I took some water I would put that product in and I decided I want to spread it out a little bit so I took some water and I just dabbed it around a little bit to thin it out. You can do that all along in this process. Now earlier I also talked about mixing colors. I can get a little bit of water here, a little bit of this one, a little bit of this one, and come up with a third intermediate color. Again, it's, it's just about adding variation and character to the model, to the finish. You may start seeing, I don't know how well, because as I'm doing this, I'm looking at the model and I'm not paying any attention to the camera. You may be able to start seeing some of this build up. Don't worry about doing it equally. You don't have to have seven of the European dust streaks over here and seven over here and eight here and eight here. You can have 20 over here and four over here. You don't even have to count. I just like to keep adding it in until I get it to what I call TLAR standard. That looks about right. For whatever my target is in terms of weathering, when I get to a point that I decide, yeah, that's about where I wanted to get with this, I call it done. Now, if you get too much in one area and you immediately notice that, you can get some water real quick and just run your brush right along the edge of it to blend that in. And that way it's a bit like oils, but you only have, I mean, at most a couple of minutes. You really want to do it within a few seconds if you see that you've got it, uh, if you've got more on than you actually want in the area. So I'm going to continue on with some additional colors and get this guy weathered up. Okay, I've continued adding colors. You can see my, my palette is becoming uh, filled with color here. I've continued adding colors, highlighting some areas with more dirt and grime and dust than others. 
Um, one of the things to also keep in mind is you can use the streaks to accentuate light and dark. Uh, if, if there's a shadowed area or an area that's going to get less light, you may want to go in heavier with some of the darker washes than with the lighter. Or conversely, if an area is going to get more light, if it's going to be more exposed to light, then you may want to go in heavier with some of the lighter washes to help accentuate that. This is a model that I had actually done modulation on uh, early on when I painted it. Modulation is a method of applying paint where you put down a base coat and then you add in highlights and shadows that are initially may look quite exaggerated, but the purpose of doing it is so when you get to this stage of the weathering and later stages that that, that exaggerated light and dark tends to be muted, but it helps to show the features of the model and it helps, I guess you'd say, uh, it helps sell the eye on this isn't a tiny plastic thing, but it tries to, uh, to give it weight and depth and height and, and make it punch beyond its weight category, I guess you would say. So all of those things come into play as you're, as you're working on weathering the model. Now, I'm not gonna do the entire model uh, for this video, that would, that would take quite a while. This process does take a little bit of time. The more facets you have on the model, the longer it takes. The, the more you want it to be weathered, uh, the more time it's gonna take. So this is gonna take me to get all of it done like I wanted, is gonna take me probably four to six hours, I would guess, that I'll do throughout the course of today. Now, as, as I always do, this will be featured in a blog post once it's finished, complete with photography. So definitely check that out. Uh, if, if it's not on the blog when this video comes out, it will be within a few days. So you'll want to check back uh, on the blog to see the final product. And yes, that's a shameless plug for the blog, johnbias.com. <laughs> um, once I get all of this weathering done with the streaking washes, I'll then go back in with various uh, Vallejo weathering effects for petrol spills, for oil stains. I'll put those around on the model. Um, and those will be focused in areas where you would expect oil stains to be. So there will be additional layering. Sometimes after putting in those oil staining effects, the, the grease and the grime and all the mechanical staining, I may come back in with some of these washes and add them back in uh, in, in specific areas just to get uh, a certain look that I'm going for. Another thing to keep in mind is that because a lot of this is caused by rain, it's washing dirt and grime down the the armor of this guy. Now this guy, he's, he's pretty big. This is not, you know, the, the pilot of this sits in this little bitty area here. So this is a really tall thing. It's, it's as big as, you know, a multi-story building. So there's going to be a gradual increase in how grimy it is the further you go down the model. So keep that in mind as you're applying these that you want, you want it to be heavier towards the bottom in general and lighter towards the top. That's why I normally start towards the bottom and kind of use that to set. In fact, I like to do the, the thighs and the calves, I guess you'd say, the, the shins on, on armor suits like this because I let however that ends up when I'm happy with it, it dictates how heavy it goes below that and how light it goes above that. Um, so, you know, you may want to start at the bottom and go up. You may want to start at the top and work your way down. Whatever works for you in your head. This works for me in my head, which is, it's a strange place anyway. There's monkeys and llamas running around in there all the time. <laughs> but anyway, those are the steps I'll take next and get this guy finished up and hopefully he'll, he'll look pretty good. All right, I'm going to wrap this video up. Um, 
right now, this is how he's looking. I don't know how well that will come out on camera, but I'm just kind of trusting that it will show some of it. Um, I'll have photography on the blog when the full build report comes out. So like I said, be sure and check that out. But I'll continue going around the model and finishing this guy up. I uh, thank you so much for taking the time to, to watch this video today. I hope it's been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please do uh, leave them in the comments down below. I think that's the right direction. <laughs> please leave them in the comments below or uh, connect to me through Facebook. I have a, a page on Facebook, John Bias Scale Models, so if you're not already following that, please do so. I'd appreciate it, and you can connect with me there. Or if you go to johnbias.com, there is a contact form there, and I'm, you know, I'd love to hear from you, and if you have questions, if I can help explain any part of this uh, uh, to, a, to a better degree, then, then please do let me know. And finally, um, if you enjoy the content that I, that I place online, if you enjoy these videos, I would be most grateful if you would consider supporting me on Patreon. Again, there will be a link in the description below in this video. And I've got various levels of support with various rewards. One of the rewards is if you're a, if you're a patron, if you're a supporter on Patreon, you get to see these videos that are free on YouTube. Uh, three days early. And additionally, I have other videos that go into more detail in building specific models where I show all of the techniques that I do in building that model. Uh, and those are Patreon exclusives. So be sure and check that out. And again, I would be most grateful for your consideration and your support. And for those who are supporting me on Patreon, thank you so much. That means uh, a lot to me. It helps me to keep putting out content at the pace that I do. I couldn't afford to do it otherwise uh, in and of myself, so I am, I am most very grateful for that. But again, these acrylic washes, uh, to wrap up, they do a great job of uh, achieving the kind of effect that an oil dot filter would achieve, but they're drying much faster and let you get work done much quicker. And if odor is a concern or if chemical volatility is a concern, um, I've got a cold right now, which you may still be able to hear it in my voice. I still haven't fully gotten over that. I, I was using some enamel washes the other day and just the smell of the enamel washes was, was creating kind of, it's never done this, but it was kind of creating a burning sensation in my nose. So I, set them aside and went back to the acrylics and don't have any problem. So they do a great job of, of weathering. They're easy to apply. They dry quick and they're readily available. You can even mix your own just simply from using acrylic paints. So again, thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a great day. Uh, always remember, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.